To Thee we come, O Lord our God. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in God, word and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. You have given my days a very short span. My life is as nothing before you. All mortals are but a breath. Anyone can see that the wise die, the fool and the senseless pass away too, and must be heroes Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be the world of the Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father of the fatherless, be compassionate to those who are careless about eternal things. You who live and those who live without you and without hope, send them the light of the Holy Spirit that they may seek the things that are above, where neither moth consumes nor raw husky destroys. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Kovaleth, vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet is enough to another who has not labored over it. He must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to man from all the toil and anxiety of heart, with which he has labored under the sun. All his days sorrow and grief are his occupation. Even at night his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm for today, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. If today you hear your voice, pardon on your hearts. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above and not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to that then, then the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. For Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thank you, <coughs> My life is worn out by sorrow. My years by sighing. My strength fails in affliction. My bones are consumed. And I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now, as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In today's first reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, we hear the name Koheleth. But who was Koheleth? First of all, it should be said that the word Koheleth was a Hebrew word meaning preacher, teacher, or a collector of sayings. And this word appears in the very first verse. While the book of Ecclesiastes does not give specific information about who this Koheleth was, it is believed by many biblical scholars that this preacher was none other than Solomon, king of Jerusalem, and the son of King David. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 9, we read that this preacher pondered, searched out, and set in order many proverbs. It is widely accepted that Solomon was also the author of the book of Proverbs which is a collection of over 800 pieces of knowledge or wisdom. In the same verse, it says that Koheleth imparted knowledge to his people. 
And I am sure that most of us have heard the term, the wisdom of Solomon. It was written that Solomon was blessed with not only profound wisdom, but also wealth and power. It is unfortunate that during a period of Solomon's life, he chose not to use his divine gift of wisdom, but rather chose a path of honoring himself before God. First of all, Solomon married an outrageous number of women and also had many concubines. We find that this book of Ecclesiastes was written by a man who had tried everything under the sun and in the end found it all to be vanity, meaningless. It is the story of a man who questions everything and fights against himself, searching for the true meaning of life. It is a story of one who sought happiness everywhere but with God, and finally comes to the awareness and the conclusion that it is God who is ultimately in all things. It is interesting that this word vanity has two opposing definitions. The first definition is that vanity is having, I quote, an excessive pride in one's own appearance or achievements, end of quote. Some of the synonyms of this kind of vanity are pride, conceitedness, narcissistic, self-centered, egotistic, and arrogant. It is interesting that of the seven deadly sins, or the seven traits of man, which finds its roots in the fourth century, pride is listed as number one. Pride has also been labeled as the father of all sins. And did you know that pride cost the devil his position in heaven? From the first letter of Paul to Timothy. The great American revivalist preacher and philosopher Jonathan Edwards wrote, and I quote, remember that pride is the worst viper that is in the heart. It is the greatest disturber of the soul's peace and the sweet communion with Christ. And it was the first sin that ever was, end of quote. Pride is generally associated with the absence of humility. It is also associated with a lack of knowledge or wisdom. John Gay, the great English poet, wrote, and I quote, by ignorance, pride is increased, and it assumes those who know the least, end of quote. The second definition of vanity takes on an opposite meaning. Vanity, in this sense, is the quality of being worthless or futile. Synonyms for this kind of vanity is, or are, futility, uselessness, pointlessness, worthlessness, and purposelessness. This is what Solomon came to realize. It was this false pride that he placed himself above God and others, and it is the same pride, false pride, that many place above God and their neighbor. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, what are the cures for pride? I would say that it begins with being honest with oneself, examining oneself, and confessing to God with sorrow one's faults. 
It is to apologize to those you have wronged and to seek full restitution. It is to humble oneself and reflect on all the wisdom that you have learned in life. It is to serve God and others as Jesus did. It is to talk less and listen more to one's own conscience. It is to retrain one's heart and mind and think kind thoughts about others and finally to reject all revenge. For the past two weeks we have read from the letter of Paul to the Colossians who speaks on dying in Christ, crucifying the old self, and putting on the new man. Our blessed Lord taught on the Sermon of the Mount, Blessed are the humble, the poor of spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Humility, my brothers and sisters, is in serving God and not oneself. Humility is in the exalting of God and others before oneself. Was this not what Jesus taught in the Gospel of Matthew 23, verse 12, when he said, Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. And it was Peter who writes in his first letter, chapter 5, verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And so, may we reflect on this day the meaning of the words of the preacher who wrote, Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake he was crucified with Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. All man's works will perish in the cave. All his handiwork will follow after him.
tell you the place where your glory dwells. For I desire to walk in this and sense your being and have mercy upon me. My foot hath always stood in the right path, in the church I will adore and praise you, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the remembrance of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they, whose memory we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we offer these gifts to you from whom all good things come. Grant us the grace to wisely use all your gifts that you have given to us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. To the Lord our God. It is right to give Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that he has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, on this day, we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son and Highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox in Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name, and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us 
to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in a magnet host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful service and hope in the greatness of your mercy. So part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us 
all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. mingling and hallowing of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins upon, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent to love, worship, adoration, and the holy water. <laughs> through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
what shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Lord, say the word, and I shall be healed.
Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroy, and thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroy, nor <coughs> thieves break in and steal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, you give us the strength of new life by the gift of this Eucharist. Protect us with your love and help us to store up our eternal treasure in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy, may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's will, yet but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Mass, if we can, I'd like to get together with members of our congregation to go over some of the updates for our 90th anniversary. A lot has been done. There will be more things that need to be done this week. I do bring to mind that we are receiving tickets, but I do ask for your help and assistance so that we can come up to that magic number of 200 for the celebration of our 90th. As you received uh, via email, I wanted to send to you at the beginning of August the history of our church, of how it started and what led up to the celebration of Holy Mass for the first time that took place exactly on August 25th 1929. So there are things that um, have fallen into place, and I really believe that our blessed Lord wanted us to celebrate 
and to mark this wonderful anniversary. Um, Wayne, can I have a copy of the, the bulletin? I kid around with Wayne and I said to Wayne, Wayne, don't get old because you forget about things. Um, this week, I have a listing of the Holy Mass intentions. On Tuesday, there is a solemnity uh, for the transfer, transfiguration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, um, we are not only accepting the tickets, and please be advised that the, the cutoff is going to be August 28th. Is we'll have to get in contact with our caterer, and we're going to have to give. I'm sorry, 18th, what did I say? 28th. <laughs> Don't get old. <laughs> on the 18th, so please, on the 18th, we need to have a count so that in turn we can get in contact with our caterers and we will have to give, um, for how many tickets we have, we're going to have to give them full payment. So please help us so that we can um, uh, have a successful 9 year. I welcome you to church today, and I welcome Jonathan Boshin, who is from FCAT. And uh, Jonathan and I have known each other for a period of time, and I want to thank Jonathan and, and acknowledge that Jonathan actually came up with a new opening uh, and a new closing to our Sunday service. Unfortunately, as, as Jonathan knows, there were uh, quite a few things that were lost on the computer. And so Jonathan not only created a new opening and closing for our um, Sunday Mass that is uh, broadcasted on the local channels and also on uh, YouTube, but also Jonathan and I have talked about a couple of other projects that we want to go forward. You know, when we hit our 90th anniversary, it doesn't mean that we just think about our past. We have to look for our future. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I ask that you remember in your prayers our parish and pray that the good Lord might bless all of us. I ask in your prayers, and I share with you just yet a moment. Do you know August 4th? is the 215th day in the year 2019. And did you know that there were more shootings in 2019 than there are days? In less than 24 hours, 30 people were killed. Just recently in Dayton, Ohio, in the downtown area, with the police responding in about a minute, the shooter took nine lives, injured 16. He used the long rifle and was killed. And also, we read that in El Paso, Texas, a single gunman killed 20, I think it's now up to 21 and over 24 injured, the shooter used an AK-47. Since the beginning of 2019, there has been, and we hit a mile mark, 250 mass shootings. The Gun Violence Archive describes a mass shooting as any incident in which at least four people were shot, <coughs> excluding the shooter. Last week we talked about the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and I mentioned about how I've become skeptic and pessimistic about what is taking place in our society. And so I bring this to you, my good people, that in our prayers, because it is our blessed Lord who said, wherever two or three are gathered, I will be amongst them. It is in our faith and our belief that the Lord is with us here today. And so that in our prayers, let us remember those who lost their lives, as well as 
their families. And pray that the good Lord might give wisdom and understanding so that we can correct a problem that makes a mockery of our society. Again, I thank you for coming to church today. May you go forth with, with wisdom and understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit and be kind to one another. God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.